Security levels. security levels offer pre-configured security choices. As per your requirement, they are configured by the experts, which means the developers, they know the best because they are developing those features. And it restricts users from the dangerous action and options depending upon the use case. Now, what you are seeing, the image uh, is from the Tor browser. They have security levels implemented in between them. So as you can see, there are three modes, standard, safer, and safest. Depending upon the case, a user can be really change what security level is enforced on their web browser. The standard mode, everything is enabled. You can then go and go safer, which is able some dangerous website features, cause them some use functionality, then they can just go into safest, which disables images, media, scripts, and it's much more restricted. While there are a lot of other browsers who also implement various kind of security levels, there has been no such implementation when it comes to these smart phones, or which we use majority of the times during our daily lives. Uh, that's why we actually went ahead and inspired from the Tor browser, we actually implemented security levels in KSOS. Uh, we also implemented three security levels, which are standard, safer, and safest. These security levels are shown the user when they boot their device preloaded with Kelix OS for the very first time. So it's presented the setup wizard that asks user to set up password, your security levels, and everything else. The options that are shown for the first, first time are standard, safer, and safest. All these options are currently in development, which means that we are improving it as user feedback comes in. Um, there are different features. Uh, sure, it's pretty good. But the standard mode is the recommended mode for everyone, which means that all it contains are default features which are configured for a normal everyday user for their everyday life. Then there is the second level, which is the safer. Safer builds upon standard, but what it does is that it sets a time on for the Wi-Fi uploaded for starters, which means that they automatically get turned off when they are not being used for a certain period of time. 
which is also user configurable, is set it to a certain timeout as well by default. Which means that if you leave home with your Wi-Fi enabled and it's not being used while you're in transit or something, it gets automatically turned off, so it gets rebooted. We also set the device to reboot automatically after a certain period of time of non-users, which means that the device is at your possession, or you just forgot it somewhere after a certain period of time, and it's not being used, it will automatically reboot, and then you will only need the pin to unlock, your fingerprint, face unlock, those kind of things won't work. The safer mode also deploys a work profile. Work profiles are a certain encapsulated profiles in which you can install your applications you wish to be, uh, limit the access to the system, which means that applications which are installed in this work profile will not have access to your data, which contains, let's say, your private images, your other applications, their data. And finally, the safer mode also enforces forward as the always on VPN which in the work profile, which means that all the network communication that is being made within that work profile is going over towards forward VPN. It's encrypted. No one knows what you are doing other than yourself. And finally, the safest mode. The safest mode does all safer, uh, but it's much restricted. There is also the fact that safers you cannot remove from the device without wiping the whole device. What safers does is that it disables USB data signaling. So if your device is connected to a PC, it will only charge, it, no data can be shared from it. There is also the fact that a lot of device issues come when you install applications from unknown sources, normally, from the internet somewhere. So safest mode also restricts the user to install the application from unknown sources. It also disables the debugging features, which means that no ADB access, you cannot connect to a PC and just use those debugging features to extract some of your data from the device. And finally, it also disables JavaScript JIT and Chromium. Now, I will go through how we actually want to develop this. This is just my show a bit amount of code that's Java and Cognitive, but it's a real simple one. Um, but before going into that, um, there were some prerequisites that were required to develop. The very first one is the Palace, which is our work profile manager application. Work profile, uh, to deploy it, you usually need a dedicated application. You can develop Palace, which is a work profile manager application. It allows users to provision and manage work profile locally on their device without connecting to the internet or asking your company to do it manually. It is very simple and written completely in Material and Material 3 of Kotlin, which is the latest recommended guidelines from the Google for the Android. It is also compatible with both ASP and Cradle build system, which means that any developer can just simply pull the repository and start working with it in the Android Studio or any idea of their choices. Next is the other options. As I mentioned earlier, in the safest mode, uh, the debugging features are disabled. And if you own an Android device, you might notice that there are quite a lot of useful features in the debugging options, which are not entirely related to the device debugging. Example would be an OEM blocking, through which you can remove the operating system installed on the device and replace it with a custom OS. The other one would be taking bug report, so that you can report to the developer which apps are crashing, which apps are not working, and whatever issues you are facing on the device. There is the also the Wi-Fi non-persistent Mac randomization, so that you can change the MAC address whenever it's get connected for Wi-Fi, and much more. Considering the debugging features were getting disabled in the safest mode, what we did was wear some of these important options outside of the developer options, so that even if the debugging features are disabled, a user can use those features without any issues. So what we did was we added a new screen for other options. Within the settings application, this contains those much frequently used sorry, options. These options also still maintain the security requirements for certain switches, such as taking bug report, which is a surefire way to collect 
what's going on with your device, and you may not want anyone to access it. So it still asks you your password whenever you want to collect a bug report. The same goes for the OEM unlocking because the operating system can be changed. So whenever you turn this on, it still asks your password before letting you do this. Now, going to development, um, how this was done. Whenever a user first opens their device for the first time, they go into setup wizard. The setup wizard then asks the user what kind of profile level they want the device to be in. Then the setup wizard propagates this to Palace, which is the Word Profile Manager application. Word Profile Palace handles all the settings that are that we want to apply to the device. As I mentioned before, that this is completely works with the Android Studio and any IP of your choice, so that any developer can simply go, change their what settings they want, their operating system to be in, and just deploy it. It will work. Then finally, once Belize is finished, it finishes whatever it wants to do. Maybe you want to open another application before letting you play the device, you can do that. It simply guides users back to the launcher to which they then start using that device. Now, looking into the code, this is the code in the setup wizard. Um, we generally prefer this as Kali Club because security level is already on the drum string we use. It, there are, this is a string that contains three values from 0 to 1 based on the security level. The setup wizard simply puts a value that says that user selects safer, so it will put one, and then it will forward this as an intent to the palace. Intents are the way through which an application on Android can communicate with another application, services, security, whatever. So it basically fires an other intent, which is actual function managed device from the trusted source. It, that's the component name, which is the palace. Then they can, users can, sorry, developers can put more settings in the extra provisioning bundle. Then, if they want, they can skip the application string, which is simply the smooth animation that can be shown by the Palace system processing in the background. Now, when Palace is launched, this on create method gets fired. Here, Palace intercepts the intent that was sent by the setup wizard. Um, there are three modes that can Palace intercept, which is action get provisioning mode. It is asked, so the system asks if what provisioning mode the device is going to be in. Alice simply tells that whatever setup wizard sent, it simply gives the power symbol extra from the setup wizard intent and it simply put it back. So Alice does not tell anything special when the provisioning mode is queried. Then there is the action admin policy compliance and action provisioning successful. So there can be two things. Once setup wizard finishes, it launches Palace. Then action admin policy compliance part is called. In that part, we can run whatever code we want to run after the probably setup wizard is finished. So what we do is simply call our complete provisioning method in which we set up various restrictions such as launching or not. For example, this on VPN, we restrict the installation of applications and other things. And on the action provisioning successful, that's all in different cases. We simply call that method again to set different settings as required for the cases. Now I'll just go through the blind features quickly. We are what we are working on at the moment. So by default, um, Android only allows one work profile per device, which means that if there's already a work profile, you cannot deploy more work profiles. This is a limitation in Android open source project on which Galaxy is based on. So we are also working on implementing multiple work profiles so that a user can deploy more profiles as per their requirement. They can deploy a work profile for personal users, they can deploy a work profile for work, VPN, no VPN, and use cases they want. Considering work profiles allows you to just turn off the entire set of applications at once. This is quite useful for users who have different use cases for different kinds of time. There is also the fact that you can use different VPNs in the different profiles. You can use separate applications, you can separate the password, the passphrases, whatever you wish for. Then there is the OS updater that we are working on. It 
OS updater is simply streams the updates from the Galaxy OS servers to your Galaxy OS devices. Uh, there is no download part, so there is no requirement for spaces. They are using the update engine APIs from the Google. So since it just simply streams of updates. Uh, it's also returned Kotlin materiality, and it's really simple. There are just simply two screens. One was visible on the screen, and the second one is the settings part, which allows you to change your update channel, update notifications, and other settings as required. Again, this is also compatible with both ASP and Cradle system, which means that any developer can simply clone and start working with it as they want. We are also planning to fetch the system updates from over time so that for a much better privacy and security purposes. Then the other features that are small, but we are also working on them, are examples such as dialer helpline links. So we want to, by default, open the helpline links within the Tor browser so that no one knows what helpline you contacted or queried for using the data. We also want to allow users to check um, whenever your device comes online, it pings a certain server to know that the internet is working, right? So we also want to implement a server selection for this connectivity check so that you can use whatever server you wish for. You think it's much better suited for your purposes for the server selection. We also consider we also replace the proprietary services with micro G or back compatibility. We are also planning to move this traffic over to us. Uh, there's another feature that we are working on is resetting the device after a number of failed attempts. So that means that if someone is trying to break into your device and enters a password wrong for four or five times, it automatically gets reset. We are also discussing more features on our Calyx OS GitLab issues. And that's all. That's all from my side. Um, if you wish to know more or join the community, then just scan the QR code. And that's all from my side. Uh, thank you. Uh, my colleague, Jai, will ask any questions if you may have. Yeah.